Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Utilizing the Arduino ADC Internal Reference. And before I get into this video, just want to say if you liked what you see in this video, if you like what you've seen in any of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, let's get started. So what we're going to cover in this video, we're going to talk about what the ADC Internal Reference is. And if you're not familiar with the ADC Reference in general, we'll cover that and what the default is and so on and so forth. Why and when would you want to use the internal reference? How to increase your measurement accuracy when you're using the internal reference? And then finally, how to use the internal reference to check your battery voltage or really just to check your VCC voltage if you don't know what it is or if it varies. Before we get started though, I want to mention that I have a three-part series called Maximizing Arduino's ADC Resolution and Accuracy. So if you really want to learn about what ADC resolution is and what the accuracy is and some of the things that affect it and how you can maximize it, check out that series. Okay, what is the ADC voltage reference? So when you have an analog to digital converter or an ADC, the way it works is it basically uses a reference. It makes a comparison based on what an input is to let's say the A0 pin or the A1 pin or whatever. It takes that value and compares it to an internal I shouldn't say internal, and to a voltage reference, and that's how it helps generate a result. The ADC reference also can affect the resolution of a measurement. Basically, the lower the reference value, the more resolution you get. And the reason is, is because the ADC, whether it's, a, let's say it's a 10-bit ADC like the Arduino Uno, that means you have 10 to the 2 different levels. So that's 1,024 different levels. If you have a reference that's 5 volts and you divide that by 1,023 because 0 is one of the, the levels, you get like 5 millivolts of resolution. If you have lower than 5 volts and you divide that by 1,023 levels, you're going to get a value that's smaller than 5 millivolts. So you can see more resolution the lower the reference value you use, but of course that lowers your measurement range. And accuracy is affected by the, the ADC reference because if you think the reference is a certain value and it's a different value, let's say you think it's 5 volts and it's 4.9 volts, then all of a sudden you're going to be off on all your measurements. Okay, and the Arduino boards typically offer three different ways to set the ADC reference. One is AVCC, which is a name the data sheet uses for the Atmega 328P chip, the chip that's on the Uno. And this is just using the VCC as your ADC reference. So if your VCC is 5 volts, that means your ADC reference is 5 volts and your ADC measurement range is 0 to 5 volts. You can use an external reference, which is what the AREF pin is for. And then also, and this is what we're going to focus on a lot in this video, is the microcontroller or the Arduino chip has an internal reference that it generates and you can use that as your measurement reference. Now for certain other boards, let's like, like let's say the Arduino Zero, you can use things like the DAC. You can the DAC value can be used as a reference. So and some Arduino boards have multiple internal reference values. But these are the three main uh, ways you can get an ADC reference. So here's just a, a cutout from the Atmega 328P chip, and all chips will have a similar layout. And I'm not going to go through everything here, but this is sort of a busy picture. But I just want to kind of show you how the chip is going to select the ADC reference. So there's an Arduino function for this, but basically there's a register here where these bits will choose, you know, a 0 or 1 will choose whether you're going to use AVCC, which is the default. If you don't change anything, the Arduino ADC will use the VCC value to as a comparison, as a reference value. If you, you know, change this register, you can use the internal 1.1 volt reference. This can turn both these references off or cut them off, and you can then use an external reference in the AREF pin. So you can input your own voltage. Of course, if you use an external reference, it still has to be within the value of VCC. You can't put, let's say, 25 volts in here. You're going to damage the chip. Please note also that you can use AREF, because we'll get back to this later, you can use AREF as a way to check the value of your reference, whether it's VCC or the internal reference, you can put a measurement, a DMM here, a multimeter or a voltmeter, and measure what it is. And of course, the reference comes in here, 
comes out the comparator and here's your channels, your ADC channels. I'm not showing them all, but ADC 7, 6, of course the UNO doesn't have that many, but uh, 5 is right here and 4 would be down here. And then of course if they compare it, depending on what your setting is, they generate a value and that's what you're going to grab when you do an ADC, excuse me, an analog read. Okay, so that's a little bit on the ADC reference itself. There's a couple different settings for the ADC reference. And the Arduino library basically has this function. You can call this function to set the reference. Now, if, if you never call this function, it'll just be the default value, which is 5 volts if you're using an Uno, or 3.3 volts if you're using something like the 8 megahertz Pro Mini. Or you can add the argument to this function internal, and that'll use the internal reference, which for the Atmega 168 and 328, the UNO chip, is 1.1 volts. It's one volt for the Arduino Zero. And then for the Mega, they have a couple other specific settings because the Mega has two different references. And then you can also set it to external for the voltage applied to the A ref pin. Okay, so that's a little bit about what the ADC reference is and also how you can use it easily with this function. Let's talk about why and when you would want to change the reference and why you would want to use the internal reference. So first off, you could use it to increase your measurement resolution. And I hinted to this earlier in the video. If you have a sensor that only outputs, let's say, 0 to 0.8 volts, you can actually get better resolution by using a reference that's a lower value and I kind of show that here in this example you know if I'm using 5 volts and I divide and I have a 10 bit ADC I divide it by 1023 bits or levels and I have a, approximately 5 millivolts of resolution if I'm using the the internal reference which is only 1.1 volts and I'm measuring 0.8 volts or 0 to 0.8 volts I'm going to get much better resolution so I can notice smaller changes in that sensor now, I will mention, you know, there is other factors involved with resolution and accuracy, and I talk about them in the video series. But, but once again, this will increase your resolution if you're measuring a small voltage value. The other reason you would want to use the 1.1 or internal reference is if your VCC value is not stable. Let's say for whatever reason you have a power supply that varies, or more common, you're doing a battery-powered application because the battery voltage level can vary. Now, if you're just using an Arduino Uno board and you're feeding a battery to its main input, that's going to go through a voltage regulator, and that voltage regulator is going to make sure you have a constant 5 volts. But let's say you've taken the chip off the development board and you're using it on a breadboard, or you're, you're bypassing the regulator and you're using a battery, well, that battery voltage is going to vary as the battery drains. And as an example, I just grabbed a, uh, a chart for the discharge of a, a AA um, alkaline battery. Now, forget that it's AA alkaline battery. It could be any battery. It's going to have a similar curve. And the idea is a AA battery is going to start out at 1.1, excuse me, 1.5 volts. And as you drain it, it's going to end, you know, it's going to be dead somewhere under 1 volt. So the whole idea here is the battery's voltage range can really vary. And if you're using that as your reference, you're not going to get accurate measurements because who knows what that value is going to be at the time you're doing your measurement. That's the value of the internal reference because as long as VCC is in the range of the chip, the internal reference will stay constant. So you have that constant reference to get an accurate measurement. And just as a note, if you are using a battery-powered device or you're using a battery to power the Arduino chip, and you want to measure a sensor that's higher voltage than the internal reference voltage of 1.1 volts, you would just use a voltage divider, you know, simple resistor voltage divider to lower the voltage within range of the internal reference voltage. So there's why you would want to use the internal reference. I talked about how to use it. I talked about what it is. That's why you would want to use it. Let's talk a little bit about increasing accuracy. And I, I talk about this in the video series I mentioned as well, but if you look at the Atmega 328P data sheet, which is once again the chip on the UNO, the internal reference can actually vary. You know, its, it's specification says 
you know, the data sheet says, you know, here's what it's supposed to be, 1.1 volts, but it can actually vary by this much. So that's about 10% error. All of a sudden, the value of the of the internal reference is is not not that great if if it's varying by that much, or you don't know what it is. It shouldn't. It doesn't necessarily vary. It just comes from the factory, not at exactly 1.1 volts. But we can compensate for that. We can do a measurement on it, and then we can either hard code into our sketch or into our EEPROM the real value of the internal reference and use that to calculate our voltages so we get a more accurate voltage measurement. And how do we do this? Well, we can connect a DMM or a digital multimeter or voltmeter to the AREF pin on the Arduino and we can check what the internal reference is. So here's some simple code to do it. I just set Arduino to the internal reference. I then just do an analog read. If you don't do an analog read, you won't get the internal reference at the uh, output of the A ref pin. So you need to actually do a read and uh, you'll get it there. Something I will mention off the, off the subject is the data sheet recommends when you change the reference, like I'm doing here because the default is AVCC, you should actually burn your first couple readings because they may be off. So when you make a reference change and you have to make an analog measurement, measure it about you know, make about five measurements and don't use those just to get the uh, ADC where it's supposed to be and then start making measurements. But anyway, here's some simple code to make a measurement, connect, you know, a DMM or a voltmeter to ground and to a ref pin. You can then get the real value of your internal reference and once again, put that in EEPROM, which is like the hard drive of the chip, or you know, hard code it into your program and use it when you make your voltage calculations so you get a better accurate voltage calculation. So here I show a calculation where ADC val is the value I measured for my ADC, which is going to be 0 to 20 or 2024. You know, I divide that since I'm using 10 bits and then I multiply it by my by my reference value and that's the value that I measured. So in my example, I, I grabbed an Uno off my desk and I measured the internal reference and it wasn't off too much, but it was off by 20 millivolts, and it's 1.08 volts. So you can see, you know, if I hard code that into, let's, and I just made up this value, 566. If I hard code that in, I can get a much more accurate value of what I'm measuring compared to here. So a big effect on the accuracy. Okay, finally, let's talk about how we can use the internal reference to measure VCC. So let's say, and I have this in my project that I'm doing right now for a wireless sensor node. Let's say that I'm, I'm powering the node with a battery and I don't have a voltage regulator because I don't, I don't want the power loss from a voltage regulator. So my battery voltage is going to slowly drop and I want to be able to know when it gets to a certain level because then my battery's dead and I want to alert my wireless temperature sensor system that, that one of the node, the battery's dead. Well, we can use the internal reference to do that. And what we do is we set the Arduino for default as AVCC as the reference. If you look here, this band gap reference is a little confusing, but the band gap reference is really the internal reference value. So this 1.1 volt is actually being fed into here as well. So you can select this. And if we have an unknown here, but a known here, we can sort of reverse engineer to get the value of this unknown. So here I have a setup and once again this is one of my prototype boards for my wireless sensor network and I'm going to power, power it from a battery. So I have my power supply simulating my battery. So here I'm going to use my, in, my reference as the unknown and the measurement value which is going to be the internal 1.1 volt measurement as my known to calculate what my battery voltage is. So let's look at the code for this. Okay, here is the code for the example I was just talking about. Here I hard code in what my internal reference cal factor is. I set this to external, which once again, that's the default, but I'm just showing you I'm setting it to an external. Whenever you change this, I mentioned burning some readings just so they're accurate. I'm not actually changing it because that's the default. I just wanted to put that in there to show you. I turn on my serial communication. 
I delay three seconds. I then print out that I measure the battery voltage. I then call this function to print out what the voltage is. So I leverage this actually from this website, Secret Voltmeter. It's a blog post. Great blog post. I appreciate you put that up there. I changed the code a little bit, but you can go to there. I'll have, and by the way, I'll have this code on my blog. You can go to their site if you want to read more about it. But here you're doing, you're setting up the registers, and all you're doing is routing the the MUX of the ADC to feed in that band gap reference or the 1.1 volt reference in as your ADC measurement. You then set up a measurement, and then you then delay for things to get set up, but you do this while loop while the measurement's being done, the conversion. You then have to get the result, which I store in an int. And since you're getting it from 8-bit registers, you actually have to get it from two different registers. So that's what we're doing here. We're getting the lower register than the upper register. I then use this formula. This is similar to the formula I showed earlier, but it's a little in reverse because we reverse engineering because we're actually trying to measure what our reference is. So we calculate it here, I then return it. I'm hooked up to the serial monitor, let's see what we, we have. So here I've been letting it print out for a while and you can see it's 3.6 volts. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the voltage level on my power supply down a bit. So you can see now it's at 3.6, 6, 3.16, 2.99, I'll go even lower. Now we're at 2.83. So that's like the battery voltage is dropping, and then if I want to do something, such as go into sleep mode when it gets too low, I can do that. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something about the Arduino ADC internal reference. Once again, for more on the ADC, check out my Maximizing Arduino's ADC Resolution and Accuracy. Also, if you have not subscribed yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.